Ah, so here is a video I feel like doing for no other reason other than it amuses me, which is about as good as introduction for any video that I do. It's called Democrats' Nightmare Polls. As President Biden stares down the barrel of yet another possible disaster scenario in the Ukraine, things just keep seeming to go from bad to worse for the beleaguered administration. I wonder why. Yes, because nothing quite says domestic policy failure like adding on top of it foreign policy disaster as well. With all of the chaos and discontent spreading throughout the country and the world, it is no surprise that Biden and his party have been on the receiving end of some very, very bad polling news. But with all the numbers and the data swirling around from dozens of polling agencies and news outlets, it's helpful to take a step back to see the full picture of where Biden and the Democrats stand with the public today. Probably perched on a cliff and giving them all the middle finger. That picture is a decidedly grim one, and if history is any guide, may get much, much worse in the months ahead. How much lower can he get? He's already sub-40 of the polls or anything to go by. Much of the discussion about Biden's dreadful poll numbers have focused on his ever-slipping approval rating. The recent Real Clip Politics average shows Biden's approval at just 41.1%, down from 55% at the beginning of this term. I thought it was 59%, but anyway. Even more striking is the percentage of Americans who disapprove, which has risen from 36% to 55% in just over a year. Oof! Some polls even found Biden's approval rating to be as low as 33%, virtually unprecedented for a president this early in his term. For reference, the average Gallup approval rating of all presidents in January of their second year in office going back to 1938 is 53%. At this point in the presidencies, George H.W. Bush sat at 80% approval. Wow. Bill Clinton at 55%. George W. Bush at 84%. What? Why are the Bushes so freaking high? Barack Obama at 49%. And even Donald Trump, who even left-wing media outlets now admit was far more popular than his polling indicated throughout his presidency, managed 38% approval. And while Trump had spent his first year as the focus of deranged conspiracy theories and unrelenting media hostility, while it's nice for someone finally to admit it, Joe Biden has been the subject of the opposite, an almost unbroken campaign of media cheerleading, while many of Biden's fiercest critics are literally censored. Digging into the numbers, things get even worse for Biden. According to data from a recent NBC poll, Biden's support has declined from 68% last April to 36% now among independents, from 83% to 64% among blacks, from 59% to 48% among Hispanics, from 61% to 51% among women, and from 56 to a shocking 40% among those aged 18 to 34. In short, Biden has lost major ground among every group in his electoral coalition. It doesn't look much better when you break things down by issue. A Politico Morning Console poll found that more than half of registered voters now disapprove of Biden's handling of the pandemic. Just 36% approve of his handling of the economy, while 54% disapprove. On immigration, those numbers are 33% and 56% respectively. On foreign policy, Biden sits at 38% to 49% approve disapprove, and he sits at 42% to 55% on education. Even on climate change, a perennial good issue for Democrats, just 33% of registered voters say they approve of how he is doing. No matter how you spin it, Americans are not happy with their president. A political morning console poll asking respondents to grade Biden's performance one year in found that 37% of people would give the president an F, including 33% of independents, while just 11% overall and 24% of Democrats would give him an A, which means that 11% of people overall are out of their fucking minds and never pay any attention to politics. One CBS News YouGov survey asked respondents to choose from a list of words describing how Biden's first year has made them feel. 50% chose frustrated, 49% chose disappointed, and just 25% chose satisfied. By 70% to 28% margin, voters don't want Biden to run for re-election, a figure that includes just 48% of Democrats. Similarly, just 28% of voters say they have a great deal of confidence that Biden can manage the White House, while half of registered voters disagree with the statement that Joe Biden is in good health. Yeah, because he's out of his fucking mind. It's worth considering just how stark these numbers are. 
In our extremely polarized society, it's hard for a president's approval rating to fall much below 30%. <laughs> Give it time. Since Gallup first started tracking presidential approval ratings in 1939, the lowest organization has recorded is 19% for George W. Bush in February of 2008, right at the depth of the financial crisis. Even one-term presidents Jimmy Carter and George H. W. Bush only bottomed out at 28% and 29% respectively. In other words, Biden may already be close to as unpopular as a president can feasibly get. But Biden apologists might say, surely voters still think the current situation is far preferable to a second Trump term, right? Not so fast. In a hypothetical 2024 matchup, Trump currently leads Biden by 5 points, 49% to 44%. Trump also leads other potential Democratic nominees Hillary Clinton, 51% to 41%, and Kamala Harris, 51% to 40%. With the midterm elections just around the corner, congressional Democrats aren't faring any much better than the president. A recent poll from the Trafalgar Group has Republicans ahead of Democrats, 55.7% to 42.2% on the generic ballot. Oh, that is crushing with just 2.1% undecided. Notably, other polls have found much smaller margins for Republicans, where clear politics has an average at 44.5% to 42.1%. But even these numbers should be alarming for Democrats hoping to retain their slim majorities in Congress this November. According to data from recent elections, Republicans tend to fare better in congressional elections in terms of seats actually won than their national vote share would suggest. In 2020, for example, the median U.S. House district was about 2.1 percentage points more Republican than the country as a whole. What this means in practice is that Democrats need to win the national House vote, for which the generic ballot is a reasonable proxy, by at least two points. And many poll watchers say it is more than that. Thus, Republicans have real reason to be optimistic, even in light of recent Democratic wins in redistricting fights and aggressive gerrymandering of blue states. Biden's approval rating also bodes ill for Democrats' chances in the House this fall. In 2006, when President Bush's approval-disapproval rating was a net minus 19.7, Republicans lost 30 House seats. In 2018, with Trump's approval rating 11 points underwater, Republicans lost 40 seats. In the famous 2010 shellacking, Democrats lost 63 seats when Obama's approval-disapproval rating was a net minus 4.3%. Today, Biden's approval-disapproval rating stands at minus 14. Oof. The story gets even worse for Democrats in the Senate, where a net loss of just one seat will hand Republicans control of the chamber. According to a model developed by Sean Trend of Real Clear Politics that has predicted the outcome of the Senate contest within one seat in each of the last four elections, a Republican-controlled Senate becomes the most likely scenario once Biden's approval drops below 48%. At 42%, the model envisions virtually no chance of Democrats to hold the Senate. But perhaps the most unnoticed alarm bell for Democrats long term is the drastic change in party identification. Over the course of 2021, Gallup found that number went from 9-point Democratic advantage, fairly standard in most years, to a 5-point Republican lead. That 14-point shift is the largest ever recorded and suggests that Americans don't just disapprove of the jobs Democrats are doing, they're abandoning the party in mass. Such an exodus raises serious questions of whether Americans aren't just fed up with Biden himself, but the entire radical direction of the Democratic Party. Given the overwhelming evidence that the public does not like the way things have been going, one might expect Biden and the Democrats to pivot back towards the center. But the president and his party appear wholly unwilling or unable to do so. As Biden put it quite bluntly in his press conference last week, I don't believe the polls. If recent history is a guide, he'd be right not to. But for different reasons, he is in all likelihood much less popular than even his dismal polling numbers indicate. And that's all for today. Until next time.